Testing one, two, one, two, three. Check, check, mic, check. Good morning, God is good all the time. Testing one, two, three. Mic check, test one, two, mic check, mic check, test one, two, checking mic. Mic check, one, two, one, two, mic check. Morning. Welcome to our Eucharistic celebration. Our mass intentions for today are for the souls of Christopher Hernandez by family, Josefina Rendon by family. Welcome to all those joining us in the parking lot. Please remember to tune your radio to 100.9 to better hear our Lord's message. We also welcome all those joining us on social media. Our entrance song for today is Mind Set on Jesus. And now, my brothers and sisters, we will enter into God's presence with our principal celebrant, Monsignor Bridges, accompanied by, by Father David Herrera and Deacon Jesse Guajardo. Thank you, and God bless you. <coughs> and don't you know that I'm this morning with my life? Bread and wine, 
a sacrifice acceptable by our Father in atonement for our sins. So, let us humbly acknowledge our need for this forgiveness. We are sinners. I confess to Almighty, Almighty God, God, God and to, to you, my brothers, brothers and sisters, sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words. Through my will agree with you all. And therefore I ask us and many other virgins, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the
Almighty, ever-living God, increase our faith, hope, and charity, <clears throat> and make us love what you command, so that we may merit what you promise through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. Thus says the Lord, You shall not molest or oppress an alien, for you were once aliens yourselves in the land of Egypt. You shall not wrong any widow or orphan. If ever you wrong them and they cry out to me, I will surely hear their cry. My wrath will flare up, and I will kill you with the sword. Then your own wives will be widows, and your children orphans. If you lend money to one of your poor neighbors among my people, you shall not act like an extortioner toward him by demanding interest from him. If you take your neighbor's cloak as a pledge, you shall return it to him before sunset. For this cloak of his is the only covering he has for his body. What else has he to sleep in? If he cries out to me, I will hear him, for I am compassionate. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I love you, Lord, my strength. I love you, Lord, my strength. I love you, Lord, my strength. O Lord, my rock, my fortress, my deliverer. I love you, I love Lord, you, Lord, my, my strength. strength. My God, my rock of refuge, my shield, the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Praise be the Lord, I exclaim, and I am safe from my enemies. I, I love, love you, Lord, Lord my, my strength. strength. The Lord lives, and blessed be my rock. Extol be God, my Savior. You have you who gave great victories to your king and showed kindness to your anointed. I love you, I love Lord, you, Lord, my, my strength. strength. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, ye know what sort of people we were among you for your sake. And ye became imitators of us and of the Lord, receiving the word in great affliction with joy from the Holy Spirit, so that ye became a model for all believers in Macedonia and Achaia. For from you the word of the Lord has surrounded forth not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but in every place your faith in God has gone forth, so that we have no need to say anything. For they themselves openly declare about us what sort of reception we had among you, and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God, and to await his Son from heaven whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who delivers us from the coming wrath. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Lord. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silent the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a scholar of the law, tested him by asking, Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, and with all of your soul, and with all of your mind. This is the greatest and the first commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. The whole law and the prophets depend on these two commandments. Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. doubt that every one of us know the greatest commandment that God has given us and how Jesus lived that commandment as an example throughout his whole life unto the cross. We are to love our God with all of our heart, soul, and mind, with everything that we are, with everything that we have. And we are to love our neighbors as ourselves. We know that commandment of love. But I think that there are different degrees in which we put it into practice. Such is the case in this story. There was once a man who was very sick and depressed for a very, very long time. And he really didn't know why. And so his wife decided that she needed to take him to the doctor. The doctor examined, examined the man and ran all sorts of tests to check the health of the patient. The doctor had the man and the wife wait in a small room while he evaluated the results of the test. Well, the man was a bit nervous, not knowing what to expect. And so, when the doctor walked into the room, the husband quickly stands up and says, Okay, doctor, just tell me. Just tell me what's wrong with me. Tell me like it is. Don't beat around the bush. Just tell me, doctor, what's wrong with me? And very calmly, the doctor says, I need to speak to your wife in private. So the wife goes with the doctor and when they are alone, the doctor tells her, Ma'am, I have a very simple treatment for your husband. What you need to do is treat him like a king. You need to show him all the gentleness and kindness that you can. Show him that you love him. That he is number one in your life. When you are in a disagreement with him, and he yells back at you. And even when you know that he is wrong, don't yell back. Just tell him that because he's a man of the house, he's right. And then apologize. And then assure him that you love him. Cook for him his favorite meals. Asado, chicken enchiladas, chile verde, menudo, barbacoa, chicken fried steak, frijoles, potato salad, macaroni and cheese, and tortillas, and not from the store, they need to be made homemade. Also, make him his favorite desserts, coconut cream pie, pineapple upside down cake, peach pie, homemade ice cream, and banana. Give him whatever he asks without a word of complaint from you. Oh, and one more thing. Because his immune system is very weak, you will have to keep your house spotless. There can be no buildup of dust. 
Man, if you do all this, your husband will live a long and happy life. If you do not do this, ma'am, I'm afraid your husband will, will not live much longer. And the doctor ended by saying, Ma'am, do you clearly understand what I am saying? And the wife, with a very concerned look on her face, nods her head, yes. Well, when the wife returns to that small room where her husband was waiting, he quickly stands up and says, Okay, just tell me what the doctor says. Tell me like it is. What's wrong with me? And the wife, in a very tender and loving voice, says, Oh, my love, you don't have long to live. A funny little story, but I'm going to say there's a lot of truth in that story. I want us to consider the doctor representing Jesus, the husband as people within this world, and the wife as a symbol of you and me. My friends, we know that Jesus has told us how we are to love our God. And we are to love one another with all of our heart, mind, and soul, totally and completely with everything that we are and everything that we have. We are to follow the example of love that Jesus gave his whole life long. Jesus showed us concretely the type of love we are to have for, for one another. He showed us that there is no limit to love, as is evident in the cross. You will agree with me. The cross is no casual type of love. It is a total self-giving in love. But my friends, even though we know God has commanded us to love as he has loved, more often than not, we are like the wife in the story. We love only to a point. But if it's going to cost us too much, we're not so committed to that commandment of love given to us by God. My friends, let me assure you, if in the way that you love does not require a, sacri a sacrifice, or if it is not difficult at times, then you are not loving others in the way God has called his followers to do so. Because God's commandment of love will at times require a sacrifice on our part. At times, it is going to be difficult. It will stretch us to the very limits of our strength. And at times, it will require us to even deny our own wants, needs, and desires. I think it's only human nature when we think of loving others that we first think of our family members and good friends. But God's way of love goes far beyond that. The true story that took place in the state of Oklahoma, when a building had collapsed and many people who were in that building at the time were trapped under the debris. Well, suddenly there were two groups of people that formed. One group began to pull back the fallen rocks and the metal from the building, trying to help rescue those who were trapped. Another group simply stood by and watched what was taking place before them. A man who was on his lunch hour was walking by and noticed a large crowd that had gathered around the catastrophe. This particular man joined the group who simply stood by and watched. He was casually standing there with his hands in his pockets. Well, several minute, minutes had passed and suddenly a friend of his came running up to him and said, my friend, do you not realize your wife and your three-year-old son were with my wife in that building when it came down? They could still be alive. Immediately, this whole demeanor of this man changed. Ripping off his coat, he ran toward the building to help rescue the people who were trapped. 
My friends, there are people in this world who are desperately in need of someone to show them that they are loved. There are some people who are lonely, who need a friend. There are people who are sick and cannot do for themselves, who need a helping hand. And just because those people are not within our immediate family, that does not excuse us from helping them. Because of our faith, because of the commandment of love that we have within the scriptures given to us by God, my friends, we cannot just stand around and watch when there are people in need within this world. Amen? My friends, there is no doubt in my mind that we often respond to our family and friends who are in need. But loving others in the way God has commanded us goes far beyond that. But I want to be realistic with you. My friends, there is a very slim chance that we will find ourselves in a situation where we are asked to die for another person. Following the example of Christ on the cross, that is a very slim chance that we will ever find ourselves in a situation like that, that we are called to die for another person. But what is more likely is that on a daily basis, we will find ourselves in situations that call for small acts of love. And I would propose to you that these small acts of love are even more important than those major acts of love that so few are called to do. Because those small acts of love keep the presence of God within our world consistently on a daily basis. Those small acts of love give people hope, give people something to hold on to. Let me share with you a small act of love that God used in me in order to bring about love and life in another person. It involves an Italian children of whom some of you have heard their stories. Luigi Fortunato di Salvatore. There were children who were physically and mentally challenged. And because of that, their parents did not want to take care of them. And so these children were left at the door of a convent, hoping that the nuns would take them in and take responsibility for them. Well, it's exactly what happened. They began to live in that convent with the nuns. A few days out of the week, I had the privilege to wake these children up and get them ready for the day. Well, on one such occasion, another seminarian went with me. And so when we arrived, I began to work with Salvatore. And the other seminarian started with Luigi. Let me just say, Luigi was having a very, very bad day. He didn't want to wake up. He didn't want to eat his breakfast. He didn't want to cooperate in any way with this other seminarian. I could tell the other seminarian was getting frustrated with Luigi. And in my opinion, he was mistreating Luigi in a, in a rough manner, trying to force the child to cooperate. At one point, the other seminarian was so frustrated that he just kind of threw his hands up and he said he couldn't do it. He was given up. I told him, Luigi is a special child. Don't give up. Just be patient with him. He's having a bad day. You need to understand that. And he told me, I don't understand this child. And I said, okay, the secret with Luigi is simply this. You have to tell him that you love him. And then... Just blow gently in his ear. After that, he will cooperate with you. The other seminarian said, No, I'm not going to do that. That's ridiculous. I replied, My friend, just humble yourself. Tell him that you love him. And blow gently in his ear. 
He will respond to you. Again, the other seminarian refused and said, I'm not going to do something like that, David. That's so stupid. Anyway, these children don't even know us. They don't know that we're here for them. They're mentally challenged, and so they can't understand. Needless to say, his comment did not sit well with me. And so I told him to back away from Luigi and that I would take care of Luigi once I finished with Salvatore. And so that's what happened. After I finished with Salvatore, I went over to Luigi and in Italian said, Buongiorno Luigi, sono io Davide, tu amico, te amo. Which means, good morning Luigi, it's me David, your friend. I love you. And then I gently blew in his ear. At that moment, Luigi smiled because he knew he was loved. And he knew it was I who had come to him. I blew in his ear again. And he smiled even bigger. My friends, after that small, insignificant, ridiculous act of love, Blowing in his ear, Luigi changed his disposition and was very cooperative and loving with me. Blowing in his ear became his love language, the language Luigi understood. It was a very small, significant, insignificant, ridiculous thing that communicated to Luigi that he was loved. And once he knew he was loved, he was very cooperative with everyone who blew in his ear. And friends, no doubt in my mind that we all know the commandment of love God has given us. And there may be a day when you are called to die for another person out of love as Christ did for us. But more than likely, what will happen is that on a daily basis, we will be given opportunity to show love to another person. And it might be a small, insignificant, and ridiculous thing to do, such as blowing in the ear of a little, of a little child. But as long as love is communicated, I think we should humble ourselves. I think we should do it because let me assure you, not only will you create a smile on the face of that person, but God himself from heaven above will also smile down upon you. Small, consistent acts of love keep the presence of God consistent within this world. We are called as followers of Christ to do that. It can be, it can be as insignificant as a little blow a breath into the air of a person. I think we should humble ourselves and do it because it's what God commands. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> we, we turn now to our gracious Father with the prayers of petition. Let's, let us renew our faith and uh, renew our identity as, as lovers within this world because of Christ's command. And so we, we profess, I believe, believe in one God, 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 Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, Christ the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, and through him all things were made. For us, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary, and he became man. For our sake he was crucified under the conscious body. He suffered death and was buried. He rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one the holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess my baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And we turn now to our gracious Father with prayers of petition. Today is a people, it is a family, and it is a church of God. Let us always thank God and never forget what he has given to us out of his love, his holy Catholic Church, and the holy sacraments. And God not only shows us, you know, that he loves us, he proves it. Because today in the Holy Eucharist, the sacrifice of the Mass, he not only told us that he loved us, but he let Jesus die. He let his son die on the cross for us. That is proof of the Father's love for each and every one of us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Pray for the holy priesthood of God. These are the priests that do great acts of love and also very small acts of love. And these acts of love is what is going to help people. It's going to help us be in the sin. No matter how great or how small our need may be, God has put this holy priest here for us to show us his love through their actions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayers. And as you sit here in your car today, behold, uh, can you prove today that you love Jesus? Can you prove it? Or are you just saying words? Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I will always love you. Is that as far as your love goes? I have stopped telling Jesus that I love him. I told Jesus, I'm going to show you, Lord, how much I love you by my deeds, by what I do for you. I want to prove to you, Jesus, that I love you. Not tell you, but prove to you. And let us ask for that grace of God today. The grace of God that I, us, we as a church of Our Lady of Guadalupe, that we prove to God that we love Him by also loving our neighbor as ourselves. Amen. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Let us also pray in this great, beautiful act of love for our departed brothers and sisters. Our prayers are a small act of love that we do for them. The holy souls in purgatory, the faithful departed, all that have died from the coronavirus, and all that are dying from other illnesses and sicknesses, you know, in the world today. May all their souls rest in peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayers. Now take a moment and uh, add your own petition now, uh, the one in, or the one in the silence of your heart. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We thank you, Father, for this privilege to seek help in every need as we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We also ask for the power for the of our Blessed Mother as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen.
that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all of his holy church. Lord, we pray, look on the offerings we make to your majesty, that whatever is done by us in your service may be directed above all to your glory through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. With the Spirit, with the Spirit. lift up your heart. With, with the love of the, the Lord. Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right and just. just. It is truly right and just. And our duty and salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. As he sat at table with his apostles at the Last Supper, he offered himself to you as the spotless lamb, the acceptable gift which gives you perfect praise. Christ has given us this memorial of his passion to bring us its saving power until the end of time. In this great sacrament, you feed your people, you strengthen them in holiness so that the family of mankind may come to walk in the light of one faith, one communion of love, we come then to this wonderful sacrament to be fed at your table, to grow into the likeness of the risen Christ. Earth unites with heaven to sing the new psalm of creation as we adore and praise you forever and sing. <laughs> sending down your spirit upon them like a dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of 
The Mystery of Faith. together with Francis our Pope and Michael our Bishop and all the church. And remember our brothers and sisters, Josephina and Christopher, and remember all of our brothers and sisters who have gone before us uh, through the door of death and who have fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection. <coughs> welcome, and welcome them into the light of your, uh, of your face. Have mercy on us all. We pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, may we merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O oh God, God, Almighty God. Father, in unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Oh, 
behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. And please remember that if you're not able to get down from your cars to receive communion, put on your hazard light, they will know to come to you. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally. Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
this coming week. If that is you, put on your hazards lights so we know where you are and you can even honk your horn if you, that's you. Okay, just a few of us. Very few. Okay, let's, let's bless them. Father God, we give you great thanks for the blessings that you do place within our lives, but especially that embrace of love. We would ask that you bless those who are celebrating their birthdays or anniversaries for this coming week. That as you renew them, in the power of your love, they may be your instruments within this world to, for those small acts of love and the big acts of love if they're called to do so. So that your presence might be very consistent among us within our world. And so we bless them as your disciples of today, sending them forth. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Congratulations, happy birthday. Also, we want to uh, continue to pray for more vocation to the priesthood and the religious life. We pray for our youth. So let us pray our, our prayer. Lord Jesus, 
As he once called the first disciples to make them fishers of men, let your sweet imitation continue to resound. Come, follow me. Give young men and women the grace of responding quickly to your voice. Support our bishops, priests, and consecrated people in their apostolic labor. Grant perseverance to our seminarians and to all those who are carrying out the ideal of a life totally consecrated to your service. Mary, Mother of the Church, the model of every vocation, help us to say yes to the Lord, who calls us to cooperate in the divine plan of salvation. Amen. My friends, with, with a message like that that we received today, as your pastor, I'm giving you homework. Yeah, I know the kids just kind of rolled their eyes, but you have homework even for uh, this Sunday. What I want us to do is we look for three people at least that we can show some type of love to. I'm not talking about our families, our good friends. I'm talking about people that we may not even know, whatever it is. But I would like for each one of us, each person, including the young people, to show three people the love of God through your actions, whatever it is. It can be a small act, even as, as blown in, 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 a, in a child's ear to get them to respond in love, to let them know that they're loved. But if every one of us do three acts of love, you think about how the kingdom of God will be spread this week. How His presence will be strengthened. Your homework will be checked. Not by me, but by God Himself. And so you're held responsible to God Himself for the three acts of love. It is your homework. It is my homework. Everyone here in the parish, in the city of Midland. Three acts of love. Let's do it, humble ourselves, and just do it for the love of our God and the for love for our neighbor. Amen? Amen. 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 The Lord be with you. With and with spirit. your spirit. May Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us all go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
Defend us in this day of battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And to thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell, Satan and all the evil spirits, who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Our Lady Guadalupe, pray, pray for us. us.